most recently I went out to North Dakota to uh, Standing Rock. Right. If you haven't heard about it, it's uh, a, a Native American reservation. They have um, treaties from 1851 and previous and some after that that declare that all this land is Sioux land. Mm -hmm. It's indigenous territory. Right. So going there, it's like going to another country. It's not America. It's, right. It's the treaty it's land. It's not the United States. It's but the there's land. an oil company that's trying to plow an oil pipeline straight through this reservation, through the treaty land, under Lake Oahe, which is a part of the Missouri River that supplies drinking water, fresh drinking water, to over 20 million Americans. And these uh, reservations that are right along the river. So the pipeline is likely to leak. Uh, you know, they leak all the time. I've seen reports every week about a pipeline in North Dakota, in Louisiana, in Texas, all over the place where these pipelines are. They leak because they're not perfect. So when I heard about this issue going on out in North Dakota, where it was connected to my ancestry, where I grew up knowing that I was somewhat, some part of me is, is indigenous. Right. So I felt a, a really strong connection to them for that mm -hmm. and just seeing the brutality that was going on. The police state out there is really putting down the indigenous folks and uh, you know putting them in jail. I went to jail. They came into the reservation without any warning and without any just cause and just grabbed me because I was all alone. So I went to jail that day. Um, that's going to be another thing I want to touch on in just a second. But sure. Was this pipeline always going to go through the reservation land? Was it like always that was the beeline they were going to take through it, or did they alter the course from, for other reasons? Right. There was an alternate course. Um, previously, it had been planned to go um, many miles north of where this area is through Bismarck and and east of that area, so it would have missed all of this large Sioux reservation land, Sioux uh, treaty land. And um, what I had heard is that the people of Bismarck complained because they didn't want it to affect their drinking water. So the company decided that, oh, indigenous folks, you Less know, rides. will have to take this from us because they're not equal to us. Mm -hmm. So they decided that it's okay for them to just go without permits, without permission, without their environmental impact study to, you know, see what the effects of an oil pipeline leak or, you know, the environmental impact of everything. They ignored all of that and said, yes, we're building because we have money. Hmm. Um, so you got arrested? Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I let people know that you're transgender, you're a trans woman? Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm so trans. You're, I don't usually say so, but I know uh, you don't. I know, yeah, I know you were talking about stealth earlier, really, but I want to yeah. say uh, you just kind of said it a little bit in passing. But I wanted for this story that you're about to tell, sure, to, for people to have a it's kind of a bit of a context of where you're coming from. Right. You get arrested in North Dakota. Yeah. You, I'm assuming when you're arrested, you're taking to a holding place, a jail, or something like that. It took a while because. Uh, where um, the camp I was staying at is um, maybe a half an hour's drive, I'm not sure how many miles, from the nearest town with a jail and you know police force building. So at first when they picked me up, the two officers that came across the barrier and grabbed me took me across, put me in handcuffs and said, oh, by the way, you're trespassing and you're under arrest. And I said, you know, I didn't resist or anything, but I told them, you know, you don't have jurisdiction here. There's no reason you can say that I'm trespassing, but now that I'm in handcuffs, what can I do? So they drive me up to Mandan, to that jail, and brought me in. I got strip searched, and through the strip search, they, you know, determined, oh, you're a male. So they tried to book me. In their, uh, in their booking paperwork as a male. And I, when they asked me to sign it, I was like, no, I can't sign this. It's an incorrect document. Legally, this is incorrect. Because I've gotten, I've had years and years of hormone therapy. I've gotten 
my legal name change, I've gotten my license updated with the correct gender marker, I've gotten my birth certificate updated with my new legal name and gender marker. Everything that I have, you know, that says I am who I am says that I'm female. So it took a long time arguing with them to get them to correct the document, but still throughout the day they decided that they had to keep me in solitary confinement. They didn't want to put me in the men's prison and they didn't want to put me in the women's prison. So I was stuck all by myself. For how long? Luckily it was only a day because uh, I got arrested early in the morning. I was all by myself walking um, down by the river and they grabbed me in the morning. Then I was able to get through my um, arraignment hearing and get bailed out in the same day. Most people who've been arrested out there are staying for three days in jail. 